We bless the name of our Lord for his another opportunity to come together to worship and to bless his name. We want to open the scriptures today. But before that, I want to remind you that the virus is still around. So please take good care of yourself and may God richly bless you. Let's bow ahead for prayer. Father, the entrance of thy word give us light. We pray for illumination and understanding today. May the word of the Lord be a blessing to us and let the name of the Lord be glorified among us. We honor you, Lord, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we get to the scriptures? Let's get to Genesis. Please open your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. We want to see how God created everything. And I want you to be aware of how we came here. You see, because it is the only the scriptures whom God has revealed how he created the world. The truth is this. When we were at creation, we were not there. You and I were not there. But the truth is this. He had revealed them unto us by the scriptures. And he said he formed man out of the dust. Let's read the verse number, chapter 2, verse number 7. 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. Actually, he said, let's create man in our own image. Then he showed us that he took from the earth and then form man out of the dust of the earth, the ground. And then he breathed into his nostril, and man became a living soul. So we know where we are coming from. We are not just existing, but God formed man out of the dust. According to his design, he has formed us. In fact, the scripture said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We are the design of God. Can you imagine human beings some living over 100 years, even the oldest man live up to 969 years, Methuselah. Man existing on the earth here. Yeah. How? Because God formed him. And look at the heart and all that he has formed in man, and it will function and work for that long. Can you imagine that engine? which man will make, and it will be working for 100 years non-stop. It is, man is wonderfully and fearfully made, and we are made of God. That is why we are grateful and thankful to him. But I am coming to you this morning, sharing this word, instructions for victory, and then the part two. Instructions for victory, part two. The truth is this. If we don't know where we are coming from, then we cannot think about where we are going. We did not just appear, but the scriptures have revealed how God formed us. And then God has also shown us where we are going. It's wonderful. I'm not just here. He formed me and gave me, gave me life, and I'm here today. And now he has shown me where I am going. When you read, John chapter number 14. Let's get to the book of John chapter 14. John 14, and then let's read from verse 1. John 14 from 1. Let us, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Uh-huh. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Uh -huh. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. You see, the truth is this. 
we know where we are coming from. We came from God. He formed us out of the dark and he breathed into our nose so that the breath of life, we became living soul. And now Jesus, before he left to heaven, he said, where I am, you will come to me. I will receive you unto myself. So we know where we are coming from. We know where we are going. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible is a wonderful book. It is God's own instructions to man. This day, I want us to see something very, 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 very important in your life. The Holy Scriptures are, are God's own manual and instruction to guide us in this life because he formed us and he knows what is good for us. He set the standards and everything in the Scripture. So we hold the Bible very dear because God gave it to man as an as a instruction and a manual instruction. They are meant for us to have a good life. When you obey the instruction therein, you study them and you feed on it, then your life will be organized. Your life will be fulfilled. Your life will be blessed because you did not re reject his word. Now listen, let me tell you a real story that happened. I remember years ago, I bought some projector. Instead of spending time to study the manual, I started operating it. When I came, I, was, I came from outside, I was so excited with my projector. We show it, oh, we're looking at some wonderful pictures on the wall. Then after a while, we want to put it back again, not knowing at least we have to spend, wait for a while before we put on the machine again. Before we are aware, we spoil the machine. Why? We did not take time, or I did not take time to study the manual instruction as how to operate that machine. I only excited with the machine and I was just going out there using it. That is the life. God has formed man in his own image and in his own likeness and given a, a manual, greatest manual instructions of life, giving us how we can enjoy the goodness of the law. But we neglect his word and go our own way, you destroy yourself like I did with my machine. You see, the truth is that if you neglect the word of the law, then you have a problem. You have a problem. In fact, there are many questions that will come to your mind you have no solution. But thank God, thank God for the Holy Scriptures. Thank God. Come on. There's something I want us to read. From Timothy. Oh, so nice a scripture. Second Timothy chapter number three, let's start from the verse 15. And that from a, from a child thou hast which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Listen, when, when you read the scriptures and you get a thing like this, it says, that, Timothy, you are blessed. From childhood, you have known the scriptures. So you can organize your life by the Holy Scripture and they will make you wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And all scripture, listen, all scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. It's not just somebody's views and opinion, no. Holy men were moved, according to Peter, and they wrote the scriptures as they were inspired. Let me tell you, God can do a lot of things. They were moved and they wrote it. It's not my views. It's not your views and opinion. It's God's own, the creator's manual, his own thought. He had brought this truth to us. And they were given by inspiration. God used men to write it for a long period. And he said, it is profitable for doctrine. The scriptures are meant to, listen, they are meant for us that we will study them and we'll be instructed in the good way to live, to organize our life, to organize the family, to love one another, and to care for one another. These are the instructions given in the scriptures. And they say they are meant for reproof. That means God has set standards. God has set standards in the Holy Scripture so that 
listen. If you read it, you know what he expects of you. If there are no scriptures, then it means anybody can do anything he wants. But the scriptures have declared God's purpose and plan and intention for us. And it is important that we understand them. And when I look at it, say, God, they are meant for reproof. That means if I'm messing around and the pastor calls you and say, hey, you don't have to do that. It is written here. God said, don't do that. Then it means you have to accept it. They are standards for instruction. The scriptures are meant for reproof, for rebuke, for correction, and for instruction. I love the instructions for righteousness. Hallelujah. It's not only for the negative, it's for the positive. The Lord, the word of God is meant for you as a way of life that you will be holy and righteous. When you feed on the scriptures, you become strong in faith and begin to do exploit. The word of the Lord are given to us that we can be blessed and we can enjoy the goodness of a life, Lord, in the land of a living. The, Lord, the word of the Lord is given for the married couple that in their home, they will know how to conduct affairs, that they will enjoy one another even as they obey the Holy Scripture, because God will tell you, forgive one another. And he said, don't be harboring ill against any, but just simply forgive and then move on with your life. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. How can I enjoy and be righteous in his presence? Feed on the word of the Lord, because the word which you receive from him will make you righteous. Because you have received his word, and you turn your life to obey it, you will become righteous. Hallelujah. Now, let's move on. But listen, when you read John, let's get back to John chapter 14. John 14 and then verse 1. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Listen, the scriptures are meant for us that we may believe in God. Believe also in me. It's very, very, very important. Many people are confused and they don't know, they don't understand the scripture. They have no, so well, he just read a scripture like just any other book. No, it is not any other book. They are the instructions from God for your well-being. And you need to believe in it. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God. Believe also in me. The word is believe. Now when you get to Hebrews chapter number 11 verse 3, it says something very, very interesting. Many people are confused. Hebrews 11, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, the fact is this, unless you believe, you will have no understanding in the Holy Scripture. Please listen to me. I want to repeat that. Unless you believe, unless you believe the Scriptures, it will be a closed book. You read it and it will be like any story book. It will be like any history book. It will not just be anything. But if through faith we understand, it means this. When you believe the Holy Scripture, the author of the book, when he sees your heart full of faith, now begins to open the Scriptures to you. The Scripture become a life. When you begin to... When, when you believe the Holy Scripture. But many people treat like you're one of the stories, the comic stories. He will just be laughing over it. And you, some of them will treat it like a history book. Some of them, listen to me. I want you to understand that this is the word of God. The author of this is the Holy Spirit. He has come to interpret and to help us understand. But until you believe, he will not open your understanding. In fact, Ephesians chapter 4 and then verse number 18. Ephesians 4, 18 says what? 
having the understanding that can be alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Listen to me. <laughs> it's interesting. If you will not believe, your understanding will be darkened. It means I'll read the scripture, but I don't understand anything. God is no respecter of persons. Even with his disciples, Cleopas and the friend, when you read Luke 24 and then verse 16, the, the scripture says that, but the eyes were withholding that they would not see him because they did not believe they were doubting. They did not believe about the resurrection. But Christ himself is a resurrector. He walked to them and started talking with them. But they did not see him. Why? Because of unbelief. Get to verse 25. And when you get to verse 25, he says something. Then he said unto them, Oh, fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now, what am I saying? The truth is this. If you do not believe what God has said, your understanding will be darkened. Even they walk with Christ, but they could not see him because they would not believe. Listen, the scriptures are meant to, for instructions of faith. The scriptures are given to us that we will believe what God has said. And when we believe in it, the Holy Spirit now will have chance to lead us and guide us in our life. But if you don't believe the Holy Scriptures, mm -mm, mm -mm, you are cut off from the life of God. You are an alien to the commonwealth of Israel. You have no relationship whatsoever to him. You see, so the truth is that God has given us the scriptures and his purpose and intent is very simple. That we will believe. When we believe, his spirit will come in and guide us and teach us and instruct us the way we should go. The many three the scriptures are one of the stories they hear at Sunday school. He will grow up and throw it away. Well, the law will not fight you. But the truth is that your understanding will be darkened. When you speak the truth to you, it becomes a mystery. In fact, Jesus said about the Pharisees. He said, when he means the Pharisees, he, speak, he spoke to them in, the, in parables. You are not meant to be a parable believer. That God will speak to you and he will not give you understanding. But you are a saint and a child of God. You are a child of course, that you may receive the word of God. Now listen, let's get to Psalm number 119 and then 130. 119 and then 130. They're powerful. The entrance of that words give us light. It gives understanding to the simple. Listen, what does that mean? It's simply this. When God's word comes to your heart, it brings illumination or light shines in your heart. It brings understanding to the simple. That means the man who embraced the world with all simplicity, just as it is, gets illumination. And the light of God is shined abroad in his heart. And he begins to understand the thing God is saying. Brother, the truth is this. The entrance of our words give us light. But if I do not pay attention to what I am given, what do I have? Darkness, darkness. You will be cut off from the light of God. In fact, if you do not believe, the scripture is saying your understanding is darkened. You are cut off from the life of God. You wouldn't understand anything that be of God. Because, listen, through faith, we understand. So the gospel is meant to be preached to everyone. All of us are given opportunity to hear the gospel as I'm coming your way now if only you believe the Lord himself will bring enlightenment he will illuminate your life you begin to understand the things of God brother when we started we did not know so much we did not understand the things of God but as we went on walking and living in Christ then we start learning the truth and the scripture and now we understand the thing we know where we are coming from. We know where we are going. We know who is coming. It's Jesus who is coming. And he is coming to receive us and we will go home. Yeah, we are not going yet. We know that he is coming. And we believe it we, by faith. 
And because we expect his coming, the Bible says, anyone who has this hope, purify himself. Yes, I, am, I know he's coming. And I also know that he's coming to take the righteous, not the sinful. And that means I have to keep walking in righteousness. I, w- I have to be pure and holy and be ready for him all times. I know that. And as I believe God with all my heart, my understanding is now open to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Listen. Many of us treat the instructions of God as nothing. But I'm coming to you here, my somebody. The truth is this. If only you embrace the word of God as it is. Now light will shine in your life. Illumination will come. You begin to know how to move, how to walk, how to live, how to conduct yourself. People say, Pastor, but how can I make it? You can make it. You don't have to struggle. All you need is very simple. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will bring it to pass. He is your God. Now, he wants to help us. He wants to lead us. The other time I was sharing with you that God has allowed the Holy Spirit to be in our life, to lead and to guide and to instruct us in the way we should go. But what about if we do not believe? If we do not believe, we are cut off. Hallelujah. Listen to me. We, we, when you read the scripture, there are some of the wonderful things you will find. There are things we may know, but we, not, we don't believe. Not that you don't know, you know it. But deep in your heart, there are things you want. So instead of following God's instruction and the truth of God's word, you subtract it, put it somewhere like the prophet Balaam. When you read Balaam's account, uh uh-uh. Oh, wonderful prophet. Numbers 22. And he could say, tell them, tell Barak that I will never move and leave, not even one step until God spoke to me. Let to 20, and then 22, and then let's get to the verse number 18. Hear Balaam speaking. Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, my God, to do less or more. Mm. So wonderfully had he declared a thing, but his heart, Balak, wants him to curse the Egyptians, but he will not curse them. And he said, oh, you don't go beyond the word of the Lord. Fine. But then, Balak will increase. He said, he called his honor. Ah, the scripture said, gifts of divination. <laughs> the, the gifts of divination. And Balak was longing deep in his heart for these gifts. He, has, he knows what God is saying, and these are the words of the Lord. Place in his mouth, he had declared it, but his heart was longing, longing for the gifts, the gifts, the gifts, for reward. And then he would tell stories, and then Baram will come. And it went on and went on and went on. And finally, he could not cast Israel, but this is what he did. He said, look. You send your woman to go and mingle with them. Let them go and mess up their men. And God will be annoyed with them so that you can fight them. This is Balaam. He has said he will not go beyond the word of God. But now he's revealing things. Why? He is longing for what? Money. You know how God evaluates all of us? It's not a brother or that sister. Let me give us some scripture. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 16. And let's take the verse number 9. You will see something very interesting about the king Asa. Mm-hmm. The prophet came to him. And this is how the prophet said. 
For the eyes of the Lord ran to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. He even thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Listen. This was a man, a king, who would not consult God. He was very good king. He was doing his best for his nation. But he got to a stage, the king of Israel will not consult God. And God was angry with him, and the prophet rebuked him. And he arrested the prophet and kept him in prison. Listen, the truth is this. God is not seen like man sees. Because God not look to our faces. He looked to the heart. Beyond what we do in public is what God sees. Beyond all that is happening around us, what are the motives? Those are the things God sees. So when we, when, when we talk about the word of God and its value, it goes beyond human faces because God has no respect of person. If God wants to give judgment, he doesn't need anybody to come around and be at a prosecutor or a witness. He doesn't need it. He knows everything. He's all-knowing God. This is our God. The scriptures have shown us who he is and the things he wants to do. And I'm coming your way this time to let you know that God has revealed this thing to us. But he wants us to believe with all our heart and change our ways. It is not why we pretend and let people see. And some of them will pretend like they are good saints. But behind the scenes, they are the devil. Now, the truth is this. If we understand these things, blessed are we. Now, how can God bless us? These are the instructions in the ways of righteousness. Hallelujah. Finally, hear me. I want you to know that you need to feed on the word of the Lord day and night. Day and night. If you want your life to be meaningful in this life, <laughs> This is why he told Joshua, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate in it day and night, and thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein, so that thou hast ha good success. Why? Because God wants you to be successful. He wants you to meditate in the book day and night. When you come to Psalm number one, and verse number two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law do he meditate day and night. You see, what am I saying? The truth is this. The scriptures are meant for us. They are meant for our good. But the saints should meditate in it. You are a believer. You come into the faith. You need to read the scripture. You need to feed on the scripture. So that your life will be meaningful. So that God will bring you light and illumination. So that you'll be enlightened. And now from this place, when you begin to understand the things of God, it is easy for the Spirit of the Lord now to lead you and guide you in all things. But when you neglect the scriptures, because when the Holy Spirit is come, he will guide us into all truth. But if you are not studying, if you are not meditating, in it, if you are not reading the scriptures, then you have challenge. Your challenge is that you have nothing prepared for yourself. Now, let me come your way. I want to be praying with you, but hear this. Today I came, continue with the series, Instructions for Victory. You need to walk in the light of the word. You need to understand the ways of the Lord. You need to feed on, with your spirit. Feed on the word. Your spirit will grow stronger. You will get understanding, illumination. The Lord will bless your life because you are obedient child. And God will begin to instruct you in the way you should go. Listen, there are many things and many things God wants you to bring to pass in your life. But he will lead you by his spirit. But these are the foundation for him leading you. You need to feed on the spirit, feed on the word, feed and make sure you are studying the scripture. Make sure you get it into your inner being and God will begin to bless you. Brother, if you have no understanding, pray. When he rose from the dead, 
he came to the disciple and opened the understanding. So hear this. If you read the scriptures and you have no understanding, may God pray that God will bring you understanding and you know what to do. Now hear me. You need Jesus. He has to be in your life. He is the light of the world. When he comes into your heart, your spirit will be born again. And you turn away your, your life over to him. Now he begins to lead you. I want him to come into your life and I want to pray with you. If you are willing, wherever you are, please just pray this prayer with me. And may he come into your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone hearing me now and watching. I pray, Lord, that your spirit will descend on them. May, your, may they receive illumination and understanding. May they walk in the light of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Now you want to receive Jesus into your heart. Pray with me. Dear Lord, I come just as I am. Accept me and help me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Be my light in this life. And let the name of the Lord be glorified in me. I honor you, my God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And we'll meet you next week. May you be blessed, stay blessed. And may the light bring illumination in your life. In Jesus' name, amen.